Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and today we're going to be comparing the 2020 RT Durango to the 2020 GT Durango. Now, I just want to mention first and foremost, this comparison isn't completely perfect. This GT Durango happens to be two-wheel drive, but other than that, it's it's a pretty fair comparison. So, as always, we're going to do a quick walk around on both of the Durangos. Then we're going to sum things up with which one I think is the better route to go, GT versus RT. A big shout out and thank you to Larry H. Miller, Dodge Ram, Jeep Chrysler, and Sandy, Utah for providing us with both of the Durangos. Check out their inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a Dodge, Ram, Jeep, or Chrysler. Let's go into the hoods of both of them. Let's start over at the GT. So we have a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter V6. It goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Towing capacity is 6,200 pounds. Now fuel economy is 19 around town, 26 on the highway. Power outputs 295 horsepower and then 260 pound feet of torque. Now over to the RT. We have a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter Hemi V8. Again, eight speed automatic transmission. Towing capacity is 7,400 pounds. Fuel economy is 14 around town and then 22 on the highway. Now in terms of power outputs, it's 360 horsepower and then 390 pound feet of torque. Now let's go over style on both of them. Let's start with the GT. So you can see this one has the traditional Durango hood. So flat hood, nothing exciting going on, but it does have the performance front fascia. So super aggressive, a bunch of air intakes that this little V6 does not need, but you do get the cool little projector lights with the little LED lights just below them. Fog lamps just down below, and by the way, those are halogen lights here on this particular GT, it says Dodge there, but here's the overall look. Now let's go over to the RT, and you can see it's got this huge hood scoop right here. This is how the Durango should have always looked, in my opinion. Nice little vents right there, looks super aggressive, super muscular in general. And then you can see the same performance front fascia. You've got the projector lights up front, which I believe are still by Xenon. Um, they haven't switched over to LEDs, I'm pretty sure. Might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure. LED um, accent lights just down below. And then you can see this one has the adaptive cruise control because it's got a little sensor for it. Again, fog lights right there. And here's one more kind of look at both of them. And let's head to the middle. Well, this is identical. 265 millimeter, 265 millimeter, 20 inch rims, 20 inch rims. But those ones look cool on the GT because they're blacked out and those ones aren't blacked out, so. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, tire and rim set up all the same. Says Hemi on the side so that everyone knows that you got a Hemi. And uh, there's no badging on the side. But the mirrors are black since that's a black top. And those mirrors are body colored because it's not a black top package. To the back. Here's our key fob for the GT. It says Dodge on the back. Lock and unlock function. Pretty simple. And by the way, the lift gate is hydraulic. That will be important in just a minute. So you can see opening that up. Pretty simple procedure. I have this seat folded up it does have a third row but you can see you can fold down the seat for a little bit extra storage space throw this out of the way there's more storage underneath there a little charging station and a little storage cubby that's not really sure what that's for but pretty simple in the back and to shut it you just gotta ah. here's the key fob for the rt it's got a couple more functions you got your remote start which now we can hear that hammy Press that again and that'll shut it off. Press the key fob twice and it'll open up the tailgate and hopefully not hit that truck. Nope, we're good. So now that the tailgate is open, we can see this rear area looks, well, identical, except we got a cargo cover. So we're winning in there. Still get the same third row, still get this random thing right there. Still get the charging station and still get storage under here. And that's for the sound system, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, and then this, you can lower this down. Oh. I didn't press hard enough. There we go. Power lift, so I don't have to uh, try it all to get it to go down. Now let's go over things on the back end and the stupid truck's in the way. But I mean, it's not a stupid truck. It's it's a sport package and it looks pretty cool, but it's in the way. Anyways, back to the GT. So you can see GT badging. LED light bar, just like on all the other Durangos, says Durango. No tow package. Dual outlet exhaust and parking sensors. Remember that. Now over to the RT. We've got RT badging. It's not blacked out, which is not as cool. Same little light bar, Durango. Dashes with the four. Does have a tow package. You can see the little hump right there. Dual outlet exhaust again and still parking sensors. 
Coming to the rear of the GT, we can see the door panel. We've got this nice little leather, random silver trim, some stitching in the leather, got a window control right here, your little door handle. This one has the bench seat configuration, so you can see full leather, and we can actually peep into the third row. The third row on both of these will be identical, but you can see how much room there really is not with the Durango, but at least it has a third row. You can pull this down, I got a couple cup holders, vents in the rear, and then we've got some storage for the third passengers. And then before I forget, climate controls right at the top of the ceiling. Now to the back of the RT, you notice that it's nicer soft touch here at the top of leather with the stitching, same trim right there. No, but the leather actually kind of feels a little bit nicer. More speakers for the sound system. This has a little bit more premium sound system. This one's got the captain chairs, have little Dodge dashes in them. Again, the leather stitching. This leather actually feels a little bit nicer. Third row is folded down, but like I said, it's identical to the GT. Heated seats in the second row, power outlet, USBs, vents, got little pockets. And this one's got TVs in the back, which it's a pretty cool little feature. Same little tri-zone climate up top. Got keyless entry for the GT, so one touch to lock it, and then to unlock it, just put your hand on the back of the door handle. Now, here's the door panel for the front, trying to come back at me. You can see window controls right here, mirror controls, another speaker for the sound system, and another one right there on the door, same leather, all that is the same. Now you can look at the seats over here, so full leather on these seats. Power adjustments, you got your lumbar support as well. Pedal layout is just down below. HUD release is just right under there. You've got your gas, this is for your lights, those are your screens, and then the steering wheel is gonna be manually adjustable. Got Kios entry, so one touch to lock it and then to unlock it, just put your hand on the back of the door handle. And then we can see again, nicer soft touch here at the top of the door panel, leather with the stitching, and then you've got that cool trim again, Harman Kardon sound system. So that means we got 19 speakers and a subwoofer. We got memory seats just down below, all of your window controls, mirror controls, all in that area. Over here, now we can look at the seats. Again, we've got the little Dodge dashes on them. Leather feels a little bit nicer. Got your power adjustments on the seat with your lumbar adjustment. Pedal layout just down below right there. You've got your hood release. This is your little gas cap right here. And then we've got their light controls. That's for the dimmers. And then the steering wheel again is manually adjustable. Now start up the Durango, just put your front of the brake, push the push start, and it'll start right up. The gauges will do a sweep and it says Durango. Our little cruise control right here. Blank switches, Dodge logo in the center. Got that for the little center screen, voice command buttons, fully wrapped in leather. You've got some nice grippier leather right here. Paddle shifters in the back of the steering wheel with little rocker panels where you can basically go through the radio stations and volume. You got your turn signal wiper stock right there on the side. Our gauges here in the center, you've got your RPMs on the left side. In the center, you've got your speed and then you've got your temperature and fuel gauge. And then there's a couple different menus that you can kind of scroll through that give you different bits of information on the Durango in general. Pretty configurable and it's easy to use overall. Here's the center screen. This one has the seven inch display. So pretty similar functionality to the 8.4 inch, just not as large. You can see that you've got the climate controls. It is a dual zone climate right here. Got your little backup camera right there. The trajectory lines can fold the headrests in the back as well. But other than that, touchscreen is responsive, pretty easy to use. I do prefer the 8.4 inch, but this will do. Analog radio controls right here, analog dual zone climate. We've got our stability control, sport mode. Right now it's in eco mode. If you turn eco mode off, that's normal mode. Got your auto stop start, and then you've got your parking sensors to turn them on or off. Got a couple little USBs. You've got your 12 volt on the other side. And then this is our shifter for that eight speed automatic. It does have a dual shift mode. If you're gonna shift the gears yourself, you can do it via the bump stick or the paddle shifters in the back of the steering wheel. Cup holders right here in this little area. And then on storage, we've got the center console, fully leather padded. You got your little top part there, and then you can got extra storage in here with a little 12 volt. And if we close that up, we can see that we've got the glove box, which again, lined with felt, has a decent amount of storage inside of it. Up top, we've got a little sunglass holder right here, light controls right there. You can get a center if this one just doesn't have it, and then a little microphone for the Bluetooth. Now remember this interior in the GT, especially the dash, guys, cause we're going over to the RT. Now to start up the RT, same function, boom. Push button, it says Durango. Sounds a lot better when it starts up because it's got a hammer. Now we've got our controls for the cruise control. This has that adaptive cruise control as well. Got your little Dodge logo in the center. This is for that little center stack right there, voice commands. It does have paddle shifters to shift the gears yourself. Rocker panels on the back of the steering wheel. 
to control the radio stations and then you got that same turn signal slash windshield wiper stock got the center gauge display it looks identical to what's in the gt so you get the rpms on the left side on the right side you've got your temperature and your fuel gauge and then and that little center stack you can see there's a bunch of different menus you can scroll through and then always shows the speed or you can make the whole screen show the speed but pretty much the same system right there now i'm going to let the first owner remove the plastic here on the screen but we've got the 8.4 inch and this one's got navigation on it so you can see response time on it is pretty good the plastic does get in the way a little bit but I definitely like the size of this. It's a lot better size-wise, a lot easier to use. And then you can see that you got that climate control. So you got dual zone for the front. You do have that rear climate as well. It's all drag and drop with these functions. Heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel. Still got that headrest fold to hit your kids in the back of the head. Backup camera with trajectory lines. And no, I am not um, supporting domestic violence or anything like that. But anyways, solid touchscreen unit in general, responsive and easy to use. We've got our analog radio controls on here. Analog controls for the climate controls on top of that. Stability control, you got your sport mode, eco mode. So if you turn eco mode off, that would be normal mode. So right now it's in eco mode, lane departure assistance, and then you've got your parking sensors. A couple USBs right here, your 12 volt. This is that shifter for the eight speed automatic. You got your manual shift mode. Again, you can use the paddle shifters for that. A couple cup holders, center console right here with some extra storage, little thing for the DVD player. You've got your little 12 volt. And then this is really cool. So you've got your all-wheel drive auto, you've got your low range. So like if you're backing up a trailer onto a steep incline, it'll help with that. And it does already come with trailer brakes integrated from the factory since it has the tow package. Try to mention the glove box, again, lined with felt. And I wanna talk about touch points. So these seats definitely softer than what's in the GT overall from the leather. You can see this one has the nice leather stitched dash. So from a dash perspective, looks a whole lot nicer. Got all of our controls for the center, so just a regular center, geez, that was blinding. Um, lights right there, you've got your tailgate release, universal garage door openers, and then the headliner is all suede in this upgraded package. So when you get the dash, you can also get like the headliner and all that. So nice touch in general, feels and looks a lot more premium. Now that we are done going over the interior on this RT, let's head back outside and see who wins. Now let's talk about price. $60,000 sticker price roughly, $38,000 sticker price. Now this is gonna be hard, but I'm gonna explain why the RT wins in just a second. But that's the pricing difference is $22,000. And let's get into why I think the RT wins. So like I said, I feel like this isn't a really fair comparison because this is all wheel drive, fully loaded every single option. This one is two wheel drive and it's not fully loaded every single op option. So if you made this four wheel drive and added every single option, the pricing would be closer to $50,000 rather than $38,000. So if we're four wheel drive and every single option and really the price difference is instead of being $22,000 difference, it's only $10,000 price difference, then I feel like the RT, again, me personally, I'd rather go for that because more power, more towing capability sounds better. Obviously you can make a GT look like an RT, but from you know standard equipment wise, that one looks better. Obviously resale value on that is gonna be better as well. And so overall, I just feel like the RT is a more complete package, has a nicer leather. Everything about it is nicer. Yes, it's more money, but I feel like it is worth the extra money. With that all being said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, whether you'd rather go for the GT or the RT, even though we have a pretty big price discrepancy. So. Again, as always, a big shout out and thank you to Larry H. Miller, Dodge Ram, Jeep Chrysler here in Sandy for lending us both of the vehicles. Check out their inventory in the link below. If you're stopping for the first time, please subscribe, comment down below what you thought, and then I'll see all of you in that next video.